example. Okay. Um, good morning and good evening, everyone. This is uh, this is Brian. Uh, I'm the co-founder and uh, CEO of Unixplore, and we are here today to talk about how to get a job in IT. And uh, we hear from uh, uh, from one of the best, uh, our, our, our one of our okay. industry partners. Uh, Bliss man. So he will come here. He's the um, senior manager digital at uh, digital analytics from Bell Media, uh, one of the largest. The uh, Bell is the the largest, not one of. I think it's the largest telecommunication company in, China, in Canada, and um, and of course there are different arms of the company. So I guess Bliss will talk about more about uh, yeah, you know his background, his company, and and his team, uh, his expertise. But you know you guys are here for him, not for me. So. Uh, uh, with no further ado, we'll we'll hand it over to Bliss. Hi, good morning, everyone. So uh, it's really nice that everyone took the time uh, out tonight. I know some of you, for some of you, it was very late. Um, for me, it's pretty early, not too early. Um, so, uh, do you want to go to the next slide, Brian? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And just a quick note, to everyone, if you have any question, okay, you can. Uh, you know, you know, put your question in the chat function. You're, you're, this is not new for you. Uh, you've been attending so many sessions. So make sure you, you write your question. You don't have to wait until the last uh, minute of the session. Um, and if you really, really want to speak out and ask me some question, you can raise your hand. There's a function um, in, your, uh, in, the, in the top bottom right corner uh, called uh, uh, reactions. Okay, you can raise your hand. Uh, but we'll save the questions for the end of the session. We'll have uh, 10 to 15 minutes for you to ask. Uh, either text or uh, using your voice. Okay, it's a good way to practice your English either way. Okay, so I let's get this going. So uh, as Brian was saying, uh, I am a senior manager at um, Bell Media um, in charge of digital analytics. Um, I've been working in the digital analytics space for um, five years now. Um, before that time, um, I was actually formally trained as a mechanical engineer. And I got my career started in mechanical engineering. Um, I got into mechanical engineering because I always really loved cars and I always wanted to work in the automotive industry. Um, retrospectively, that's kind of like really loving bubble tea and then getting a job making bubble teas for 40 hours a week. Um, the reality wasn't nearly as much fun as what I had imagined it to be. Um, but during my time as a mechanical engineer, I was designing engineered fasteners for uh, vehicles. So we work on all the little clips and screws that hold cars together. Um, and you know, in my second year as an engineer, I was given the opportunity to uh, work on a project to um, uh, revamp the whole quotations process. We worked closely with a lot of uh, manufacturers from overseas and domestically. And the process to actually get a quote from somebody on, you know, making screws was very, very slow. It took, you know, almost 13 days. And part of the reason for that was because the system and the process wasn't um, done with computers. Everyone was printing things out, writing on them, doing math by hand, and that made it very slow. So as an engineer, um, I thought, you know, the computer's been invented, or we should be able to do this in a seamless sort of way. And I started to study and look into uh, creating a relational database, a SQL database for managing all these things. It took me about uh, a year of learning on my own to actually, you know, go around and speak to all the people in the company and figure out how the, the tasks were done and build the database out with, you know, a, a good UI that they need, they'd know how to use it and to be able to enter the data in. And, you know, it got to the point where it was streamlined from down from a team of 13 down to a team of three. And we were now collecting all this data. So in my second year working on this database, I realized we have a huge treasure trove of data now and let's start running some analytics against it. So I started building out um, analytics and you know, graphs and visualizations to show you know, some of our manufacturers are actually not competitive on these types of products. And some are more competitive like this. And some of our customers are just coming to us for a quote, but they're never giving us business. So let's stop focusing on these people and let's stop asking these people for those types of products. And we were able to really get that down from it taking 13 business days to return a quote down to four business days to return a quote, which is a huge improvement, which really helps you be competitive in that space. Um, at the end of my third year at the company, I realized I wasn't really passionate about screws anymore. Um, and I was really passionate about the impact that I could make with building software and with data analytics. So 
you know, I quit my job as an engineer and I decided to go back to school uh, and do a boot camp in tech development to try and get into the tech space because it is, uh, of course, it can be daunting to try and get a job in this space because it's such a, a hot space and uh, you're never quite sure what an employer is looking for and what skills you need to develop. And I think that uh, if I can give you some insight on that today to, to help you with that journey, then you know, I think that'll be a real success. Um, do you want to go to the next slide? Mm -hmm. So insights about the data analytics industry, industry and even software development in general. Um, you know, uh, software development is so important today. We do so much online and somebody has to build every website, uh, every page, every app, every service. Uh, so they're always looking for software developers. Uh, in terms of uh, data analytics and data analysis, that's, I would argue, equally as important because you know, we have so many services which are seemingly free, um, but someone's got to pay for that. And that money comes from advertisement and that's what really fuels the industry. Uh, in recent years, um, we've had um, some big shakeups in the data analytics space. So we've had government legislation um, I don't know if uh, the audience is familiar with uh, GDPR, uh, but that's the European Union's guidelines mm -hmm. on data privacy and uh, data retention and you know, the right to be forgotten and all those sorts of things. Um, we've had CCPA, that is um, California legislation um, on you know, how you can cancel a subscription and what data you're allowed to collect and what you have to let people know about. Um, uh, at the same time, um, the end user is becoming more and more aware that these big companies are collecting data about them and, you know, in exchange for a service. But now that these big data, these uh, companies are collecting a lot of data, like Facebook, like Google, just try and sell them things. And with a lot of people, that doesn't sit well. Um, we have uh, increasing uh, technological uh, clampdowns on the data that can be collected. So, uh, you know, Apple has introduced their intelligent tracking prevention, um, and that's um, a whole series of iOS technologies to uh, limit the amount of data that we're allowed to collect as a third party. Um, Google Chrome is discontinuing third party cookies or planning on discontinuing third party cookies. Um, Firefox already comes with enhanced tracking protection that blocks a lot of third party trackers. And even outside of those built in technologies, you know, We've had uh, we've seen an increase of users using ad block, which blocks a lot of our third party tracking. So uh, the landscape is becoming more and more difficult um, for us to actually do the tracking. And, you know, the uh, idea of these big companies coming in uh, for user and user privacy, it, that sounds great. But, you know, behind that veil, there is um, the truth that the reason they're doing the limitation is to limit the amount of uh, competition in their own ecosystem. Uh, Apple is trying to create its own uh, in-house advertising sort of marketing platform. Uh, same with Google. And they want that bigger cut of the pie themselves. Um, so while I don't think that we're ever going to see um, the third party sort of tracking disappear, it just, there will always be a need for it because there are always going to be organizations, companies that don't have the uh, manpower or resources to be able to create their own first party system. I could see a bigger shift in developing tools in-house and a relying on data that isn't um, provided by a third party or that isn't uh, relying on technologies that are controlled by somebody else. Um, and, you know, that means that as we go forward, there's going to be a bigger need for um, data engineers to build out the infrastructure. There's going to be a, a need for uh, strong data analysts who can not only do the visualization, but they can also do some degree of um, SQL querying or NoSQL database querying to sort of uh, build out the reports um, based off of the data that we have. And um, analysts who have a good uh, analytical mind to understand, you know, what data do I have? How do I interpret it? And what does that mean for um, my end user? And what does that mean for the business? Uh, do you want to go to the next slide? Mm -hmm. So 
how do we enter the industry as a fresh grad? Um, this is a really sort of daunting task. And uh, it's been a couple of years since I've been a fresh grad now. Um, so I'm going to try to give you um, the best advice that I can. And I know that that doesn't necessarily always translate that well, especially in these times of COVID and not being able to go out. But um, if I had um, if I had advice to give, I'd say uh, keep an eye on what the trends are in the industry and uh, try to develop your own skills to try and match those trends. So uh, to give you an example, uh, when I was getting into web development, um, you know, JavaScript was the most popular programming language at the time. And the space that I wanted to be operating was uh, in was the, the web space. So I took the time out to um, develop my JavaScript skills and to um, get good at the language because that just makes doing the interview that much easier. Um, you know, today I might say um, try and develop skills in Python and uh, big data and, you know, learning tools that are used in the industry like well, Looker and Tableau uh, to uh, be able to uh, prepare yourself for those interviews. Um, another thing that's really important is to make sure that, um, you know, your social media and your uh, resume, those are all prepared for job hunting. It's great to try and get a job, but if someone goes to Google you online and they, they go to your LinkedIn page and there's no picture and no details and uh, your network is small, then that doesn't look good for you. Um, which leads me to my next uh, recommendation. It's to um, try and network however you can. So um, it is difficult to network in person today. Um, of course, you know, we're not allowed to have large uh, you know, large meetings, but uh, that's the best place that you can meet people in, in the industry short of working in the industry already. So that can be all sorts of things, events like this with Brian and Unit Explore, and then you get to meet um, people like me, um, and as well as other uh, fresh grads uh, who are looking for jobs in the industry. I mean, um, your peer today could end up being your boss two years down the line or your coworker two years down the line. So that's a great, that's a great place to uh, meet people. And, you know, you should all be adding each other on social media and uh, knowing one another so that, you know, you can keep abreast of things. Because who knows when uh, Gary might be able to introduce Han to uh, a new job. So that's, that's huge. Um, if you can, um, going to uh, meetups in the, the area, you know, if you're, I don't know where everyone is, but um, if you want to get a job in Toronto and you're in Toronto and you can go to a meetup about uh, analytics uh, and meet people in the industry, either the speaker or other people in the industry who are working there, that's a great place to meet people. And that's actually a great place where recruiters will go and they'll try and meet uh, fresh candidates. If you're there for that, that's even better. So uh, those are my recommendations. Uh, make sure that you're resume your social media is prepared uh you know practice the skills that you think that you're going to need and do research about that so you you know what you want to be working in and then network 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 and try and meet people because you never know when someone will take a liking to you and you're looking to hire so uh, you know those are all great places to go um and i guess the last thing is um be really cognizant about the type of role that you're looking for um, it's all well and good to uh, apply to as many jobs as you can, but you know some jobs are looking for a very specific skill set and looking for you know lots of years of experience. And I'm not saying don't ever go for a role like that, but if you're trying to learn and you don't actually have any experience, try to look for uh, an environment where they have a sort of um, a strong set of senior developers and they understand that you're a junior and that you'll need to learn on the job and they're willing to build you up and to teach you and be patient with you. Um, but go to the next slide. So what are managers looking for when hiring for a team? Uh, I'm gonna tell you what I look for. This is not necessarily the same for every employer, uh, but 
I'll try to be general and to give you uh, a good idea so that um, you can sort of apply it to as much as you can. So um, specifically in data analytics, um, you know, we look for uh, a certain set of skills. Um, the first set of the first thing we look for is somebody who has an analytical thinking mind. Um, so what does that mean? That we're looking for somebody who is able to, um, you know, understand uh, and draw conclusions from the data. So, uh, for example, if we were looking at uh, this idea of, oh, like I, I want to know how many of my users are doing this, um, what data might I have? So, if you're saying uh, I'm looking for how many of my users are commuters, uh, you might look at um, GOIP. You might look at the type of device that they're on, because if you're on a, you're commuting in, you're on your phone, right? Uh, you might look at the type of content they're consuming. If it's a, a short commute, it might be short form content. Uh, if it's a long commute, it might be long form content. Um, we're looking for people who can um, think about a situation, think about uh, how we would uh, measure something or draw that conclusion. And that is something that's really important for data analytics. Um, we're also looking for technical skill. So, uh, you know, in our line of work, uh, I'm working specifically in media, which is um, different than say, working in e-commerce or working in uh, news. So having um, a specific set of tailored skills and being familiar with the sort of technologies that we use in that space, um, that's extremely important. Uh, as well as, you know, having um, technical skills in general. I mean, it's always good to know how to program in general because uh, that is transferable, uh, but specific skills we also look for. Um, attention to detail. Um, data analytics is the type of work where um, small changes or um, small differences in the way that your data is coming in uh, can make a uh, big difference to the resolution you have on a situation and how much you can get from that situation. So having really close attention to detail is extremely important. Um, uh, for me, uh, having a developer who interviews and wants to build for the long term, uh, that is really important. So um, what I mean by that is uh, building up technology in a way that is sustainable. So uh, you know, we'll look at things like um, GitHub, uh, or example code to see, um, are you building your software out with automated tests? Um, do you write your code in a way that is really uh, easy for another developer to pick up? Um, you know, learning a new piece of software, uh, let, me, let me step that back for a second. Um, you know, we've met, uh, we've had the privilege of meeting some really brilliant developers and uh, sometimes you'll have a, a brilliant developer who can knock out a piece of code very quickly, but the way they write the code, um, it's, it's very confusing or it's um, not well tested. So sometimes there are errors with it if you reach an edge case and that actually slows down the team in general as you go forward. So building for long-term and sustainably is really important. Um, cultural fit is really important and um, that means like, can you work with the team? So, you know, as one of our final steps before hiring, we'll bring them in and we'll have them meet the team uh, to make sure that uh, they get along with everybody and that uh, they want to work together. They're not a, a lone wolf. Um, they're a good communicator uh, and they're open to criticism or open to change. And uh, at the end of the day, we're, if I'm on a team with somebody, uh, I want both of us to be working for the same goal. And if you let egos get in the way, then that becomes a problem. Having one, having one negative person on a team can really bring down the productivity of the team as a whole. So that's really important as well. Um, being service oriented, uh, you know, I don't build any of my analytics software for myself. Um, I build it really uh, in order to give our stakeholders, whether that be the business owner or whether that be our reporting team, the ability to do their jobs. So I'm providing a service and that means that 
um, the way I approach a situation, you know, if somebody needs something from me, uh, the answer should generally be yes, uh, if possible, of course, or within reason. And you're trying to help these people be successful. And that's uh, also really important. Um, you know, I'm also looking for um, all those things I had mentioned earlier. So, uh, so does this person have, um, you know, a full complete LinkedIn profile? Uh, has their application been tailored uh, towards my job? I mean, uh, the number of times I've received resumes that are four pages long and they're just really generic. It, you know, you can tell when somebody hasn't taken the time to uh, make that resume uh, specifically relevant for the job that they're applying for. And that shows a degree of effort um, that, you know, hasn't necessarily been uh, given. Uh, do you want to go to the next slide, Brian? All right. So tips on preparing a resume uh, and how to interview for IT jobs. Um, my tips for a resume, um, first one is probably keep it short. So, um, you know, I think that you can keep a resume down to one page and keep it uh, as relevant as possible. So, you know, give me sort of um, your uh, relevant job experience, give me a relevant education experience and give me a highlight of uh, the skills that you have, which would make you a good fit for this job. Um, it means that it takes more time to write a resume because as you apply for individual jobs, you should be tailoring your resume for those jobs. Um, you know, like I was saying, you got a resume that's four pages long and I'm hiring for a job and we have 30 candidates, do you think that I'm going to read a four-page resume 30 times? Like that, that's a lot of reading, and that shows that the candidate hasn't taken the time to give me the most relevant data. So if you can give me all the relevant pieces of data and to keep that resume short, then that improves your chances of uh, being able to um, get on my short list for people to actually interview. Um, so that'd be my advice there. Um, you know, supplement that resume with um, other forms of information. So um, if, you, if you do code and you have code, uh, you know, use GitHub. It shows me that you know how to work with uh, the Git process uh, and it shows me your style of coding. So if I like your resume, I go, oh, well, he, he seems good and he's got a GitHub linked. I'm gonna go to his GitHub, look at the GitHub, look at the way there's their style of coding, whether they're using tests, uh, whether they're adding in comments, whether they're, um, you know, whether, whether they've identified issues to improve and whether they're uh, reviewing with other people. Like that's um, a great way of showing that you can work on a team uh, on code before you actually work in, in the industry. So that's also great, um, especially if, you know, it's uh, an interesting project too. If you've gone to a hackathon or something and you have a, an interesting project where you've worked on with a bunch of people, um, that is, that is a, a great, great thing we'll see. Um, my next um, recommendation is to practice interviews. I mean, um, for uh, many of Unix Explorer's uh, students or um, you know, users, uh, I think that interviewing in English might be a challenge. Um, and if you can find a native English speaker to practice with, um, that can really help uh, your own confidence, which will improve your performance uh, during an interview. Uh, and that'll also help you sort of uh, get your eye in on what to expect from uh, the interviewer when you go to interview with them. Um, the next thing uh, is uh, a bit of a bummer, but, you know, realistically, you're not going to get every job. Uh, you know, if you think about the fact that uh, we, we post a job up and we get, you know, 10 or 20 candidates, I would love to give jobs to probably the top five of those candidates. They're probably very, very close, but uh, even so I can't because there's only the one role. There's only the one budget for it. So when you go out and start interviewing, um, understand that you're not gonna actually get every job, but every interview is also valuable because that builds your practice, that builds your ability to, to tell a narrative about yourself and that uh, builds, your confidence in being able to do those interviews. Uh, and 
even if you're very, very good at what you do, if there's somebody who's equally as good as you and they have a little more experience, then they're going to win out in that case. And that's, that's outside of your control. And it's not nothing, anything you've done wrong. It's just, it, it's a competition for these jobs. And uh, sometimes it's not going to go your way, but sometimes eventually it will. I mean, for my first job out of um, the boot camp, I interviewed nine times in two weeks. And, you know, the first eight interviews, uh, I'd get to the end of the interview, came out of the room and I was like, well, I messed that up. And, uh, you know, the important thing is there is either you get the job or you learn a great lesson. And then, you know, the next time you have an interview, you remember, oh, you know, I was asked this last interview or I had this type of question and I got really nervous. So, you know, this time I'll just take a deep breath, take my time, you know, those sorts of little, little techniques and it, to not, not get discouraged because, you know, it is hard getting into the industry initially. Um, and part of that is perseverance and, you know, being resilient to that. Um, the last uh, bit of advice I have is to um, look up the companies that you want to apply for. I mean, there are a lot of companies which are great, but, you know, uh, try to be self-aware about what you're looking for in a company and the type of environment that you do best in. Um, it's all well and good if you can get a job at Amazon or uh, Google or Alibaba or something, but, you know, even if you get past the interview process and you get the job, if now you're working 60 hours a week doing uh, a piece of software that you don't really care for, you're going to be miserable. So, you know, don't do that to yourself. Make sure that uh, when you're interviewing, not only are you um, being evaluated by the company and whether you'll be a good fit there, but evaluate the company and figure out whether they're a good fit for your lifestyle and what you cherish and treasure. So. Uh, those are my, my resume or my interview and resume tips. Uh, going to go to the next slide. So um, developing your career, once you manage to get in as a software developer and data analyst, um, that is a slightly, different, uh, a slightly different sort of set of questions. Um, I've seen developers go um, one of two ways with this. You know, some developers will... Um, will work sort of uh, in, in a space. So they'll be a front-end developer or they'll be a specifically a back-end developer. And um, in doing so, uh, you keep abreast of the technologies and uh, people don't often stay at a company for very long. So once you are a developer and you're proven, um, you'll find that every couple months you'll have recruiters knocking down your door to try and get an interview with you because there's a lot of company hopping within this space uh, in this industry, at least, at least in Canada. Uh, and that's actually a great way of um, developing a broad set of experiences and um, also improving your, your salary and getting uh, raises and um, um, getting raises and new roles of responsibilities. Um, you know, you could also go the direction of um, becoming a developer and then sort of moving up the ladder and getting into the management sphere. Uh, that depends on whether uh, you, some people really like management and they like the idea of um, managing the product on a high level and uh, helping developers um, grow from junior developers into senior developers. Uh, you know, that's a specific, a specific skill set, and it's different than the skill set of being deep in the technology and uh, becoming technologically an expert in your field. So those are sort of two different paths. Um, but uh, I think it's hard to know now if you're a new grad, um, which path is really for you. I mean, if you have the self-awareness to know, it's like, oh, I definitely want to get into management, and that's great. Um, but oftentimes, this is something that you need to experience. And by working different roles to know whether um, bureaucracy is right for you or whether, you know, to find technical detail uh, is the way to go. So that'd be my, experience, my uh, advice there. Um, I think that that um, pretty much wraps up, you know, I think everything I have to say about uh, 
So let's open up the floor to questions, uh, if you guys have any. Yes, thank you. And that's a thank you for, for police and thank you for everyone um, uh, 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 you know, listening and, 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 and joining the session. So what we have, I just heard the whole, the whole webinar and I think uh, there's a lot of information that I didn't know and I don't think I would be able to, I'm, I'm always amazed by how much work you guys can do by writing a piece of code. Um, but, um, you know, I, you know, after, after hearing what you said, I, I'm like, okay, do I want to get into a software development field? But it's too late for me. It's too late for me. Uh, but as, as I mentioned, like I, I've, I've done some uh, data analytics work, but you know, my, my part of job is, uh, it's quite uh, different from what you do, Bliss. It's it's very because yours is uh, a, a heavily relevant to, heavily related to coding, uh, mm -hmm. programming software. Um, but my I, I just use um, I just use uh, you know softwares like Power BI, Tableau uh, to to analyze data from like marketing, business development, or uh, sales, financial data. Uh, to solve the business issue, so it's more it's more about like business analytics, but but I think it's not that uh, heavily uh, involved with uh, with data coding. Um, but uh, I think there might be a lot of questions. I actually uh, just a quick reminder, everyone, like if you have any questions, uh, you know, just make sure you write in the chat function uh, and, and don't don't be shy. Just just write your question. Nobody would uh, you know whatever question you have, nobody will judge you uh, and. Uh, and we'll, we'll, it's a great opportunity for police to answer your question, um, you know, kind of like a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but uh, what we do is that you are seeing our, on, our, on our screen that, that if, you, if you want to talk to us, if you want to book a one-hour session with Bliss uh, or with any of our industry partners, then you can talk to, um, scan, the, scan the code on, 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 the, on the left, and then you can talk to one of our team members. Uh, we have some programs to help you build, you know, arrange a virtual coffee chat. Um, but uh, now it's time for questions that we, I have a question for you. Um, I received this question from, um, from a student I talked to. Um, and basically, it's about what I just mentioned. Um, so, so in, there are, you know, data analytics has become a very popular uh, area uh, for a lot of students and you're either developing a career in or uh, studying the program uh, in this field. So uh, some people, um, you know, we have people, we have students from different backgrounds. Some are from uh, economics, statistics. Some are from, uh, you know, purely business, um, bachelor of commerce, and some are from uh, computer science. So when they look to get into the data analytics industry, they uh, they have different options. So some are studying master of data science. Some are studying uh, master of business analytics. So when you when you hire someone into your team. Um, you know, based on the specific line of work, um, are you, do you have any preference on what kind of degree uh, they, 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 they have, uh, whether a data science or business analytics or statistics? Um, can, you, can you share some thoughts on that? Mm, yeah, certainly. Um, I think that one of the um, things that I really enjoy about working in tech uh, is that it's sort of, uh, levels the playing field in a way. Um, you know, when I'm interviewing a candidate um, and I, they have a, a master's in commerce from Queens University, let's say, um, you know, that's great. And I, I look at that, I go, okay, so um, they definitely have a good head on their shoulders. Um, but, you know, what I'm really looking for is whether they can do the job. So even if somebody has um, a degree in uh, something unrelated. So they have a degree in fine art, let's say, mm -hmm. if they can come in and they know how to um, do a SQL query to pull the data that I'm looking for. And then uh, given a data set, they're able to do the analysis. Um, for me, that's enough. That, that is, uh, if you can do the job and you can prove to me they can do the job, then um, that's excellent. Um, with that said, of course, I do take into account um, if they have a specialization in that field and they have advanced knowledge in that field. Um, but usually you can tell pretty quickly whether, um, uh, whether the degree will make a difference uh, based on the questions you ask and the answers you receive. So mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's great to have. Um, I'm not knocking degrees and I'm not knocking specializations, but um, you know, even if you don't have that degree in specialization, 
but you know how to do the task and you know how to work with the data and uh, you know work with the technologies, then um, that's what I'm really interested in because at the end of the day, um, I'm not looking at people's degrees at work. I'm just asking them these questions and I expect them to be able to answer them. Mm -hmm. So uh, you mentioned something about networking, right? When you get a job, you always want to look for, you want to make sure you build your network. You want to make sure you have the right people to talk to. Um, so I always tell, tell our students that, you know, networking is the, not one of, it's the most important thing of getting a job, uh, whether it's a fresh grad or a professional, um, you know, actually when you, when you become a professional in the, in the industry, then you know, you don't need to kind of, you know, get a job and a job will come to you. Right. So, uh, but that all comes from building your, your social network. So can you share one, one of your stories uh, about networking, how networking actually got you a job? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I know you probably don't like the way of submitting hundred resumes uh, in one day. Uh, can you share a story? Yeah, um, I can. I can actually share two stories. I think oh, um, nice. both my last roles have been um, through networking. So um, you know, my first my first job out of uh, the boot camp, um, you know, I had gone to. Uh, I was uh, at that point. I treated finding a job like a job. So mm -hmm. I would go to a co-working space, um, you know, 8 a.m. every day and 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. I would either be working on my GitHub so that my code um, was, you know, well tested and well commented and uh, the formatting was good or I was working on my resume and applications or um, I was practice interviewing and I was preparing myself to um, be ready to get a job. Uh, as part of that, um, I was going to, you know, five or six meetups a week. One of the great things about being in a big city, and if that's available to you, is that there are always groups of people looking at um, meeting up and discussing like interests. So, um, you know, I'd gone to a machine learning meetup and, uh, you know, we we're learning some interesting, um, interesting things about um, a random forest and that kind of thing. But while I was there, uh, I ended up meeting uh, one of the recruiters from CBC Radio Canada, which is our national broadcaster. And he gave us this card and he said, hey, um, we're looking for developers. If you're interested, um, you know, drop me a line and I'll be happy to get you into the process. I was there with um, seven other people uh, from my own class, from the, the, the cohort of um, boot camps. And I was the only one that actually reached out to him and oh. followed up with him. Um, and, you know, that was the job that I ended up getting as my first job. And it was a, a great employer that taught me a lot, a lot about analytics uh, and set me on this sort of path. Um, you know, while I was there working at that job, um, you know, I met a lot of other people who worked uh, on the floor, you know, people mm -hmm. that I didn't necessarily do, um, that I didn't need to know and didn't need to work with um, to actually do my job. But, you know, I, I went out of my way to, to meet people and, there's a lot of cool people there. So um, one of those people um, ended up being my boss um, at my current job. So mm -hmm. she had gone over to Bell Media and then, you know, in doing so, she was working and needed somebody who had a really, um, a really deep understanding of data analytics, especially in the media space. Mm -hmm. And once you know it, since we were already close friends, she said, come work for me, please. Like I need, I need your expertise. And, you know, that was how I got pulled into this job. So both of my jobs that I've forgotten have been through um, networking. And that's, that's why I think it's so important to be able to um, get to know people and to make a good impression so that, you know, when they think of a role, like oh, we really need somebody who knows this, they can say, oh, I know somebody who knows this. So let me, let me get them and see if they want to work here. Wow. Come work for me. I need you to help me with this. Well, wouldn't that be something everyone wants to hear? <laughs> Would be uh, one of your birthday wishes. Um, yeah, that, that sounds amazing. Like, you know, it's, um, it is uh, this kind of, uh, you know, network doesn't come, uh, you know, doesn't kind of build itself. Like you need to kind of work your way up and, mm -hmm. and uh, work your way out to kind of, uh, you know, build this network. You don't, you know, your first, your reach out, like people reaching out to you didn't just come from nowhere. Like you started building all this, you know, meeting different people. Uh, so, so it's very important. Uh, I think I think everyone here should know that you need to start your uh, building your network even when you're just 
you know, applying to a program or studying, um, you know, don't wait until the last second after you graduate. Oh, how am I going to build my network? Like, is, there, then there's no time because networking building is, it takes a lot of time. Um, and this is exactly why we wanted to, you know, introduce our industry partners to our, to our students at the very early stage. You know, we talking to, you talk to some people, um, you, know, in, in, you know, when they're just studying their, uh, application process to schools. And, and that, that's something that's very, um, I think it's very valuable to a lot of people. Um, so, so they don't get to the wrong boat uh, at the very beginning. So we have a, we have a question here. Um, you know, uh, just before we answer this question, I just want to send something to the chat box. So we have, uh, you know, the, the community network is something that if you haven't, if you're applying to school in Canada, you haven't talked to us, make sure you book a meeting with us through the first link. And the second link is a, web, it's a website where you can see all our industry partners are our great uh, programs from, uh, that can help you find a job. Uh, we also provide, uh, you know, job referrals uh, to our members. Um, so, but of course, we're not going to just you know, send every resume to our industry partners, then please will kill me. Um, and, you know, but we are hoping to build a connection uh, between our, between the job seekers, your, your, you know, like you guys, uh, and the employers, the hiring managers like Plus. So make sure, you know, uh, spend some time on our website, spend some time talking to uh, our members at Unixplore. Uh, you can scan the code that, that you just saw, you can click on the links, and the, they will get you somewhere. So, uh, next, I want to spend some time on the question that we got from uh, Xingling. Xingling asked a question. Hello, please. And Brian, thank you for your sharing. You're welcome. I wonder whether the master programs in data science and computer science would accept students from other majors. Uh, me, myself, is a master's student majoring in counseling psychology, who uh, while interested in data science and computer science. So, this is a question kind of related to school application. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I you know I think I think will be best answered by um, by by either myself or uh, or someone from our team. Uh, but Bliss, from your experience, from your for, from your 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 industry experience and your educational background, um, would that be something you would actually suggest um, someone with a counseling psychology master degree to go in to go into? A computer science or data science field? Um, so that's a complicated sort of question, I think. Um, I, I think you'd have to check with the school specifically if you wanted to get into uh, like a deeply academic sort of field. Um, I think that that would be um, a pretty challenging for the candidate um, just because I think that if you wanted to get, for example, a master's in computer science or a master's in data science, that they would expect a certain degree of um, competency with the technologies before you mm -hmm. started, because that's what they'll expect you to use um, for the degree. And that might be too much of a hurdle. Um, you know, if you're uh, majoring in counseling psychology right now, and you don't have that experience, you haven't done that study on your own, um, uh, as a as an alternative, I might suggest, um, you know, doing a, a tech boot camp. They are kind of expensive, but no more expensive than like a master's degree. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, the, the certificate you get from a tech boot camp might be less prestigious than a master's degree from a university, but the actual skills that you'll be learning at that tech boot camp um, are usually tailored for the industry. So you'll be learning directly how to use the skills and technologies that they use in industry. And um, in a short period of time, usually tech boot camps are sort of like 10 or 15 weeks long sort of length. Um, you will get uh, a lot of information and a lot of practice and uh, even um, uh, a lot of exposure to employers and uh, to build out a network very quickly. So that's an option that, that's the way I, I went about my um, entry into uh, the computer science sort of field. So that'd be my recommendation there, or mm -hmm. at least uh, a suggestion that you might want to consider. Mm -hmm. and, and I, I, I want to add something on to uh, this because you are, you are thinking about a shift in your, uh, your whether your career or your, your profession. So um, I know some people are, some people, you know, when, if you're studying counseling psychology, you might be dealing with, uh, 
you know, uh, you know, there are there is uh, one of the specializations of the program called uh, educational technology. Uh, it sounds like it's related to data science or computer science, but uh, a lot of computer science programs in Canada, uh, especially on the master level, they require you to have a bachelor degree in computer science, uh, or you have uh, taken some computer science uh, courses. So, so that is something, and data science as well. Like they would, they would want you to to have done something like you know statistics or um, you know other other types of uh, mathematical courses. So, so you need to look at all those different course matches. Uh, but also, um, different schools would have different requirements. So, if you want to, um, you know, go into a data science, might be easier. Uh, not not easier to get in, but com compared with. Uh, with computer science, it might it might be relatively easier to for, or to get in without uh, uh, without a, a matching degree. So so that is something you can look at. But but you know you always want to ask yourself why do I want to do this? Um, you know you clearly you have done something related to education and um, you know psychology. Uh, but why do you want to go into a tech field? Uh, do you have the necessary skill sets and, and experience to get into this field? Uh, even if you did get into a master program, uh, would you be competitive uh, when you graduate uh, into the job market? So, so there's a lot of things you need to think about. You know, what is your uh, long-term, short-term career goal? What is your, uh, what is your plan? Um, you know, whether it's a personality and everything. So, so Xin Ling, I, I would actually encourage you to, 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 to fill out that form. And uh, the first link I sent you, you know, just book a meeting with us. Um, we'll talk about, you know, what might be the best strategy for you when it comes to school application. Um, I'm not sure if you have talked to one of our associates, uh, either myself or someone else, but, um, you know, we can, we have some, uh, on our team, we have a lot of people specializing in computer science at, uh, uh, you know, they're either PhD or uh, master of, uh, master, uh, master graduates. Uh, from uh, University of Waterloo, um, McMaster, McGill, UBC, Alberta. So yeah, talk to you know, talk to us, and we can get some uh, some 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 answers for you. Uh, but but from uh, the, but those are just some thoughts that Bliss and myself are um, you know throwing out there. Just want to give you some uh, some some insights. Um, hope they'll help. Hope those help. Um, and do we have any questions? Because we are we are running out of time. Um, so we have it's almost 20, almost eleven o'clock, ten fifty two right now. Um, and we we we've heard a lot of stories and and especially our, your networking story that really hope that that really that to me that was really awesome because um, you know when you when you have someone coming to you saying I need you to work for me, um, it's just uh, it's just the best thing in the world. So um, I think it, as I mentioned, like you know, today we've talked about uh, a lot of industry insights. We've talked about how to get in this, how to get this field, how to develop your career. Uh, but for a lot of people in our waiting room, uh, not in the waiting, in our in our in a meeting room, that we all need to think about what you want to what you want to do three years down the road and where you want to go. So now that's why we always give people the um, uh, the necessary uh, uh, you know suggestions and necessary uh, uh, chances to meet with our industry partners. Um, so just a quick note to everyone that we are as we're wrapping up this session, uh, I just want to give a quick um, a quick show of uh, of our most recent changes in our proposal. So if you are if you are thinking about applying to school, uh, what we can help you with, uh, of course, this one is actually going to be in, uh, uh, this one is actually going to be in Chinese, but, but you know what, that's fine. Uh, I want to just quickly show you what we have here, uh, which is, let's just make sure we get here. So we're gonna have this. Uh, we made a few changes to our proposal. So basically, we'll have you'll have the you'll have a look at this proposal, which is to which is a much more comprehensive and detailed. This is a new format that we actually um, and we actually published. Uh, so where you're gonna have a lot of information about your programs. So we're gonna spend hours and hours making this for you, um, you know, and and then you'll be able to have a comprehensive view of the programs that you can get into. So it takes a lot of time for us to actually build this proposal. So uh, I think if you are thinking about applying to school, uh, definitely don't miss this um, uh, 
don't don't miss this opportunity and you know talk to us about our programs about our services uh, but also like right now we're having this um, um, you know we have this i network membership that will help you build your career meet people like bliss uh, in the in, from the industries uh, so i think those will be very helpful so um, contact us if you haven't um, and, and 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 again I want to say thank you very much for joining the session. I know it's very late for some of you. Uh, and Bliss, thank you very much for sharing a lot of your stories and uh, a lot of your insights. You know, hearing from a hiring manager is always the best thing uh, to help you prepare your interview, to help you uh, prepare your job searching. So thanks a lot for that. Um, and yeah, that, that wraps up our, our session today. Um, so we're going to have a, you know, in, in about a week or so, we'll have another webinar featuring one of our team members to talk about the application to uh, arts and education and design um, a, a related degrees. So we're going to have an open discussion there. Um, and then stay tuned for other webinars. And if you want to meet with Bliss and just talk to us, then we'll, we'll, we'll have some programs to help you uh, arrange some one on one meetings. Um, but yeah, those are. Every, that's everything for today. Thanks again. Uh, hope everyone have a great weekend. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Okay. Bye.